What's happening everybody? The Poets here. Hope you're doing well and staying safe. And as you can tell, there's a lot going on here. So what I have here is the Lee and Lee O11 Dynamic Mini Snow Edition. And shout out to actually Asus and Lee and Lee for sending me this like a long time ago because this has been an awesome limited release, actually a pre-release when I had this, and just a lot of fun to build in. And it looks great too. I mean, it's a snow edition. So what I have here is an RTX 3090 from an HP Omen 30L. And we are in a time that's weird where it makes more sense to buy a pre-built these days and then just harvest whatever parts you want and build the system you want, because that's kind of what this is. And then the processor is a Ryzen 9 3900 XT, 12 cores, 24 threads. And the motherboard is an Asus B550F gaming Wi-Fi, 32 gigs of RAM, uh, two terabyte Western Digital NVMe black drive. And uh, let's see, I think 32 gigs of uh, HyperX uh, RAM. So uh, very capable system, especially for like video editing, obviously with the 3090. And what we're gonna do here is really see what the differences are from air cooling. And this has been a pretty decent, actually air cooler on this 3090. So good job, HP. Um, but this is going to kick it up a notch. We're gonna make things wet and demonetized. So what this is, is the EK Quantum Vector front backplate for a 3080, 3090 GPU with a reference design. And this is the active cooling backplate. So it's basically a GPU sandwich, like water cooling GPU sandwich. So I'm really excited about this. So I'm going to see exactly what the differences are in temperatures, uh, not only obviously for the main part of the GPU, but like RAM and other places as well. So I've already ran a number of benchmarks on this. So I have a baseline. So this should be interesting. Um, also, EK sent me this. So this is the uh, quantum reflection uh, distribution plate with a D5 pump on there. So that goes right on the front of this case as well. So as you can tell, there's a lot of things going on with this series. We even have the EK quantum velocity CPU water block for the 3900 XT in here. So we're just gonna kind of take our time. I may actually end up doing initial soft tubing uh, just to kind of get the lay of the land and then maybe do a separate video series as well for hard line tubing for my techniques for bending actually acrylic because I'm going to use acrylic instead of PETG for this. So let's uh, get into this. I've been talking far too much. Let's slap this water cooling sandwich on this 3090. So let's bring you guys up to speed a little bit. This has changed somewhat. I changed the motherboard out because I wanted a more white look for this uh, 11 Dynamic Mini Snow Edition. It's the same motherboard as the Asus RG Strix B550, but it's the A version instead of the F version. The F version had Wi-Fi and it was black. The A version doesn't have Wi-Fi, it has uh, 2.5 gig internet, ethernet, and um, it's white. So it made more sense. And I did change out the processor as well. It had a 3900 XT, 12 cores, 24 threads, perfectly good Ryzen 9 processor, but Micro Center had the 5000 series in stock, the 5950X, 16 cores, 32 threads. So I had to pick that up. And uh, very next day they were sold out. So yes, this is like the next day and I'm wearing the same shirt because this is my PC building shirt right now. So what else is going on with this build is I did stick in the distro plate. So this thing was so nice and easy. It just kind of slid right in, a couple of screws, you're done. I'm using the Arctic P12 fans as intake because they're high static pressure fans. So it's pulling air through a 360 millimeter slim radiator by EK. 
And then the Bionics fans over here, these are the 140s. They're high airflow fans, but they should do an okay job pulling air through the radiator that I have here. So this is a 240 millimeter radiator, which did not fit. So I had to use extremely, extremely strong double-sided tape and it basically almost tore my skin off. It's so strong. So yeah, I'm really happy with this because this is not going anywhere. Uh, I couldn't screw it in because it, the screws were interfering with the blades for the 140s here. So uh, I was just like, you know what? Double-sided Velcro tape works. Up here, these are the fans from the Arctic 360 millimeter AIO, the white edition. Uh, so RG Strix, excellent quality. And I did previous videos on this showing how to mount a 360 millimeter AIO, in this case with an ATX motherboard. So these fans, obviously without the AIO, fit perfectly fine. So it worked out because they're white, they're basically silent when I'm running them with my fan curve, and the RGB looks really, really good with this. So overall, next step is take this apart, do my water cooling sandwich with the active cooling back plate in the front, and then just do it up with a soft line tubing to get you guys some results, and then another video to get the hard line tubing all said and done to make this a more permanent build. So 16 cores, 32 threads, RTX 3090, it's gonna be a beast. And here we are with the O11 Dynamic Mini Snow Edition, water-cooled with a lot of EK hardware. So let's start with this. This is the EK Quantum Reflection Distribution Plate with a D5 pump. And as you see, it has a lot of ports there for some flexibility for however you wanna run your tubes. This D5 pump is very powerful and actually pretty darn quiet as well. I basically just leave it at 50% speed because that's really all I need, even on full load. Right here in this bottom port here, I do have a temperature sensor, so I can monitor the water temperatures and actually adjust my fan curve based on those temperatures as well. So this build is full of EK hardware, as you see. So cooling the 5950X, a 16 core, 32 thread processor is the EK Quantum Velocity CPU water block very easy to install and i'm really happy with the temperatures this ek quantum reflection distribution plate gives you lots of options as you see and i do have a drain valve stuck right there so i like that right there and that allows me to kind of just get in and out of the system as i need to when it comes to draining the ek quantum vector is definitely stunning i love the ability to have a gpu placed like this and you can actually see the water cooling on top of it I'm using clear EK fluid right now. You can use the fluid of your choice to really make it pop and stand out based on your own tastes and preferences. Now let's go through the temperature differences of the EK Quantum Vector active backplate with the EK Quantum Vector front plate compared to air cooling, the stock air cooler. So let's get into it. So that's about it. This has been an interesting process, a lot of fun overall, and big shout out to EK for sending me all of these review units. Uh, I definitely enjoyed testing these out, and I am impressed by the drop in the memory junction temperatures across the board, especially that Blender benchmark run. Having the memory junction drop 48 degrees Celsius is no small feat. Uh, so yeah, kudos. And overall, this is a really fun thing to do for me. Water cooling is, uh, somewhat of a PC enthusiast type of thing and every like six months or so I'm pretty much like redoing deep blue over here and uh, I can't wait till the next time I want to redo Destro over there as well So there's just a lot of creative outlets that water cooling lets you do and when you're using these machines for things like 4k video editing You know things like blender 3d modeling Temperatures get up there much more so than than just gaming gaming is easy to keep cool but when you're doing workloads like that Having a water-cooled PC is, is definitely where it's at, especially having the, the backside cooled. Um, it obviously makes a huge, huge difference. So let me know if you guys have any questions in the comments below. Uh, big shout out to EK for all of these review units, uh, especially the, um, the 5950X is loving the temperatures on this uh, EK Velocity CPU water block. 
Uh, this uh, reflection distro plate right here, yeah, it's spot on. Uh, I, I definitely love the look of that. And the D5 pump is very, very powerful as well. And then of course, these, the, the front and back plates for this 3090, it, it's, it's definitely the way to go for, for this system. So hopefully you can take this data and kind of figure out if uh, going this route is right for you. But either way, let me know if you guys have questions and let's call it a video. I will see you in the next one. Peace.